Hello, hello everyone. We're talking of today about taking your life from burnout to bliss. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Who's ready for that? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> All right. Welcome. You want to introduce yourself, ma'am? I am, but I'm also trying to get this so I can see you and me. Uh. At the same time, my windows doing something crazy, so I'm just going to go ahead. My name is Rashida Dow, and I am one of the hosts of Exodus Summit. I'm also the creator of From Burnout to Bliss, which is a career break planning course that takes you from like stress and overwhelm to living your best life around the globe, wherever you want that to be. My name is Stephanie Perry, and I am here to help, and I'm going to be your um uh, uh, I'm going to be your stand in. Okay. So you're going to ask questions. You're going to type in some questions. I am going to ask Rashida some questions and Rashida is going to answer some questions about your plan to take a sabbatical or to be a digital nomad or to work remotely or to move abroad. Okay. If you have questions about any of those things, which I know you do, because that's why you're here. If you have questions about those things, you are going to type those things into the type box thing. Y'all know, and then <laughs> I am going to play the role of you today. I am going to ask your questions, and Rashida is going to answer the questions. Okay. Does, does that make you the moderator? No. No. Because it's only the moderator asks the questions, right? I I'm just know. a reader. I am just the voice actor. You're just a reader. <laughs> okay. Question for you, Stephanie, because I've never seen Zoom is giving me some issues it's never given me before. Okay. Can you see one of us at a time, or can you see both of us? One of us at a time still. Okay, girl. It won't even give me the full Zoom window <laughs> the view. anymore. Uh, Hi, self view. <laughs> we'll get it, what's... we'll get it. Hi, Francis. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Rosanna. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Janelle. Hey, Kay. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Mama. Ms. Dow. Hey, hey Adelia. Hey. Our friends Wait, are here. You just called my mama, Mama? Is that what happened? Yes. Yes. Yeah, my mom's not here yet. Where you at, mom? What's she doing? What is it, Thursday? She'll be here. Um, my mom was already trying to trade me out for you, so please. Let's she not. want me because my mom has not been into Mexico. Your mom has been to Mexico twice since my mom has been. <laughs> so you're, you're actually the better option. <laughs> Listen. All right. Okay, we're supposed to be on gallery view now, but I don't. Boom, did it. Oh, so done? Did okay. It. Yes. All right. Yay. 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 Okay. Hey, y'all. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, From Burnout to Bliss starts in 10 days ish. I, I will not do math. I'm going to tell you right here today. Okay. I posted about going live and I wrote, we're going live on March 30th. And someone commented that it's April. And I was like, no, <laughs> April's tomorrow. Girl. So, <laughs> What month it is, what day it is, I don't know. What I do know is how to teach you how to move abroad. I can help you make a plan to move abroad. I can help you make a plan to get out of a job you hate and start chasing a life and living, catching that life you love and really yeah. living it. That is what I know how to do. If I tell you it's 10 days away and it's really 11, you have to live with that. That's not, <laughs> that's not my specialty. No, I know what month it is, I don't know. Um, but I'm super excited because uh, I launched from Burnout to Bliss twice a year, and it's one of my favorite times of the year because I get all these people who are super excited about changing their lives. And then over the course of the three month program, we really see those changes happen. I see yes. people quitting their jobs. I see people yes. planning and taking sabbaticals. I see people's jobs, giving them permission to leave. And my last client got a paid sabbatical that was six weeks paid without going to work. And she didn't know it was available at all until we got in the course and we started talking about strategies to figure out how to get out. Even if you don't wanna quit your job, even if you want to stay, um, we talk about ways that you can do that because people, some people have jobs they love and they just want some time off. So we talked about how to get extended time off. We talked about how to get the most from a job if you're planning to leave it. Um, and then we also talk about the other logistics of 
moving abroad, of getting the visas, of how to get into some countries that are harder to get into. You know, a lot of countries are telling us, no, we can't get in right now. But for most of those countries, there's a loophole or two. And collectively, I, I know a lot of them, right? Because we've been doing this for a while. But then our collective energy together, um, what I often find happening is we'll I'll be telling someone a strategy for, because for group coaching sessions, I should have mentioned that. So we yes. I do group coaching sessions and I'll talk to one person about a strategy for them. And then a month later, I'll hear that somebody else use that strange, same strategy for themselves. And now they're going to France for a year. Yay. Yay. Um, and getting into France for a year means you can get all over Europe. Europe. <laughs> for a year. France is Europe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, those are things it's really exciting to see people make these changes you know come in thinking i want to do this but i don't know if it's possible and then leave a program saying this is exactly what i'm going to do this is the timeline these are my steps this is what i'm going to tell my job my job to either like like with one of my last clients you can let me leave and come back or you can let me leave but i'm going either way right and that's what a lot of women feel like is they have that i'm i have to get out i want to get out so even if my job doesn't allow me to come back or they don't consider it like a, a, a leave and it's really the ending of this job, they would still rather go and create something new, do something new than to be at a job they don't wanna be at, so. Yeah. All right, so From Burnout to Bliss is a program that starts on May 9th, 9th, 9th. 9th. okay. Yes. It starts on May 9th, it includes group coaching. Uh, there are some, upgrades that will also include some in, is, is that still happening up uh, or we to up uh, uh, shouldn't ask you, i should have asked you for some info more info there's some uh, there, are there are office hours office hours hours once Good. a month um and that is available for the first 30 people who sign up um what else so um there's a woman that i know and some of you know too her name is stephanie perry and she has created a product called house sitter school and everyone who signs up for uh, from around the list also gets a copy of House Sitter School. If you already have a copy of House Sitter School, you can, because I know some of you do, you can share that with a friend. But I have some new bonuses this year that I'm really excited about. Um, everyone gets an Exodus Summit workshop. Uh, and if you know the workshops used in the past were about getting residency in France, in Portugal, in Mexico. We talked about um, remote Teaching. work. Uh -huh. We talked about uh, starting a business in Ghana. We've workshops on that. And then we started a workshop on uh, teaching online. So these are all things that you can get a little bonus. A little, if, if that is part of your plan, you get a little informa extra information. Um, so you get to choose one of those. And Libria Jones, also known as Wonder Woman Inc. online um, on, uh, on IG. Uh, has a remote ready bundle where she gives you a program that helps you find, get, and get remote jobs. So she helps you through things like the interview process, looking for jobs, a ton of, like from the beginning to the end of the remote job search process. Um, and you'll get that, her remote ready bundle as a bonus if you sign up for Burnout to Bliss. Yay. Yay. So where do we go? Uh, you Sign go up. to from burnout to bliss.co. All right. So I, so I hear, so as your proxy, okay, I'm here to ask Rashida your questions. You can ask questions specifically about the program from burnout to bliss. Uh, you can ask questions about uh, remote work, about taking, planning a sabbatical, about planning, moving abroad. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. get her questions, get your questions answered uh, now. Right, live Q and A. That's the whole point. Yeah. Hi. So, <laughs> one of the questions that came up in the, I posted about this. One of the questions that was already posted was, "Oh, should you buy an around the world ticket if you're doing a sabbatical or a career mm. break?" I don't mm. think so. I don't think it's necessary, um, because I think around the world tickets can lock you into certain cities or depends on how you buy them certain um, dates or times of the year to travel and one of the best parts of being on sabbatical is going where you want when you want yeah. and those 
around the world tickets aren't necessarily going to be significantly cheaper than some of the deals you can find online right now. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to go to Asia next year, you could have started with that, the airfare to Tokyo that people got last week, start in Tokyo and then travel around Asia, getting cheap flights from place to place. Yeah. Um, now I'm never gonna tell you to bet your future on an airfare because <laughs> Those might be honored, those might not be honored, but it's still, uh, I still think it's a safe, you'll, you'll end up wasting yeah. less money doing it that way than buying an around the world ticket and feeling like either you have to travel at certain times or you have to go to certain locations because you're not, when you start traveling, you're going to want more freedom. You're going to want to say like, yes, I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm in South Africa today and I don't want, I had plans to go to Turkey, but I'm not, go, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to have to go in the around the world order that the ticket is in, right? Or I want extra stops that aren't available on that. I don't, I think around the world tickets are a little old school. Like they, they yeah. served a purpose when it was harder to find your own tickets online. And the idea right. of traveling around the world you needed a lot of guidance and a little bit of flexibility. Now I think you can get it, you can get the same results with more flexibility um, and you can get your own guidance online. And so I'm gonna say no to around the world tickets. And that question came from YouTube, so hey. Good, good. Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. I That around the world tickets are something that I never thought about when I was planning my sabbatical, my, my, my career break or whatever you wanna call it, my gap year. Um, because I didn't know. I didn't know that they existed. So, so that's good. That's good information that it's not may it may not be as awesome as it sounds. You know, you're gonna be more locked in than you want. And mm -hmm. we want freedom. We want mm -hmm. freedom. All right. So I saw a question, but I scrolled on by and now I can't find it. Kathy. Okay, so Kathy wants to know: is there a limit to how many times you can leave Mexico with a temporary visa? If there what is the limit if there is one? Thanks, Kathy. Temporary residency? Temporary residency, yes. No, they don't care. Mexico, unlike a lot of the other countries, Mexico, once you do the part you have to do in the US, the application part, once you get that finalized in Mexico, you could leave the next day, right? Um, <laughs> you probably shouldn't. Uh, if you want to turn your temporary residency into permanent residency, there may be some things you have to do, some rules you have to pay attention to. But if you're happy with the residency you have, or if you have permanent residency, or if you have temporary residency and your goal isn't to turn that into permanent residency, do whatever you want. You might even be able to do your, be able to do whatever you want if you're turning your temporary residency to permanent residency. But there's there's one pick up there, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, yeah, you could leave the next day. You can stay gone for a while. Um, but like if you're never in the country, they might look at that when you're trying to get your permanent residency. Also, right. to note, Mexico residency has these rules, but they also have these humans who are <laughs> dealing with the rules. And so the rules might say one thing and the human you're dealing with might say something completely different. So it's easy to say you can um, leave the country and you pretty much don't have to be there at all once you get residency. But if the person who's doing your application doesn't like the look of that, like if you're, you're trying to transition from permanent to temporary to permanent residency, that might be okay as far as the rules go. But if the human who's doing it doesn't like it, you might have a problem. And that's what we hear not a lot of, but a, quite a bit of in Mexico and in most other countries, there's always a human who has to process it. Um, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I uh, actually, I want to do something at the- The reason that Kathy the, asked that is- oh, Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, we're delayed, I have a delay, sorry. I was just gonna say the reason that Kathy asked that, if anybody who doesn't know, that the reason she asked that is that there are countries where if you're going through the residency process, you have to be, you have to stay put in that country for X number of days out of the year. Um, but Mexico doesn't have that particular rule. 
but there some countries do. So if you get in on your visa on your visa and then you you know process your temporary residency, some places are like, okay, now you don't leave this country for X number of months, or you yes. can only be gone for so many days out of the year. Yes. I have a client who went to yes. Portugal and did the residency part, and then she left before she was allowed to leave. Uh, she, she left in an amount of time that means that she no longer has residency there. So she right. has to, um, Start over. if she wants residency, she has to do it, process again. The process is gonna be easier the second time than the first time, just by nature, because she knows what to do now, who to talk to, et cetera. But yeah, a lot of countries care about that. Mexico is not one of them countries. Like you're here, okay, that's fine. You're good. Yeah. All right, Janelle, you know, Janelle's question. What about countries that require a return ticket before you land? Should you book it and then cancel it when you arrive? I have had a few places. Um, I've had more airlines leaving the US require a return ticket than countries require it when I'm landing. Most countries, when I, I can't remember, I think I've only been to like one place that was like, okay, so when are you leaving? Um, mm -hmm. And I knew that in advance. I knew they wanted to see a return ticket. Um, however, flying on a lot of airlines leaving the US, I get the, you can't get on unless you have a return ticket. So what I typically do, if I know it's just the airline, is I buy a ticket as I'm like, cause this is usually at the boarding gate. Like I've got, I checked in, I'm online, I'm here. I'm at the boarding gate and they're like, we haven't seen your return ticket, you can't get on. So I'm like, buy a return ticket on your airline. I'm going to get on the plane. And when I get on the plane, I'm canceling that ticket. Now, if a, if you want, if it's the country that needs it to see it, mm -hmm. I would actually try to have a forward plan so that I don't, you can cancel it when you get there, right? You talked about buying a ticket and canceling when you get there. But if you have to have an exit from the country in order to be in the country, I'm a little cautious. So I would try to have one anyway. So what is my plan to leave? When, it, when am I going to go? So that if anything happens, say I get stopped somewhere and they're like, okay, what's your exit? You know, like what's your information? I have it to give them and it's not just a cancel thing. Although if you had like the original email, they'll probably never know it was canceled, but just in case. Um, I I just can't think of, it happened in one country that was like, I can't remember which one, when it was. One country was like, where are you? And it might've been when I went to the Seychelles. They were like, what's your forward plan, mm. ma'am? And I had to do that. Every, otherwise, most countries I had that like, whatever. Mm -hmm. The only country that did that to me was ba uh, Indonesia, going to, going to Bali. Um, and I had to have my ticket. I, I was coming from Australia and flying into Indonesia. And I had to have my ticket. Indonesia, I think, gave me 60 days on the tourist visa. And I had to have a ticket 60 days or less out of Indonesia. Yeah. So there are there are countries that do that. There are countries who really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but the, yeah, there are countries who have that. When you're in from burnout to bliss, you'll be talking about with each other. You'll be talking about your plans and you will hear things that you never knew. Right. Mm -hmm. There's another thing. So, so both questions are both are things that I did not know um, until I got in, uh, involved with other people who were working on the same plan or doing the same things that I was doing. That's the benefit of being in a group coaching program or in a program that has um, community with it. You get the coaches info and you get the in, you get to hear what everyone else is doing and you get info from them, too. Right. From burnout to bliss will get you will answer questions that you didn't even have yet. Ooh, sorry, I saw that Rosanna, Rosanna mentioned something in the comments that I thought about when I was answering the question, which is that there are some places where you can pay for a return ticket and then they'll cancel it for you. It's like a rental, like they'll cancel the ticket for you. And it's like you're paying only a smidgen of money instead of buying a whole ticket and canceling it. You might be better off buying a refundable <laughs> ticket and doing that. Um, yeah. I feel like these, these they're not scams, right? Like it is a, it's a legitimate company just intending to get you around the rules. Um, I, to be on the safe side, I'd rather have, a, especially if I was going into a country that needed it, a, a non a refundable ticket so that I could change it if I wanted to, um, but also so that I had it. Or sometimes it's just, there are some times when you're traveling, especially if you're traveling long-term, 
it's just best. It's easiest and it'll cause the less brain stress for you to have something that's definite. Like this, I already have, this yes. country wants the ticket. All right, I pick this date. This is the day I'm leaving your country. That's that's the only, that's what I know, right? Like sometimes that is just easier than trying to play games with getting in and getting out and how long you stay and where you're going to go next. Sometimes it's easier to have that plan in advance. Um, a lot, when you travel long term, you're going to have to make a lot of decisions. And if, I mean, a lot of decisions, like where I need to figure out where to get my laundry done. I need to figure out where the grocery store is. And that might be a new decision every like three or four days or three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. And so certain things like I am leaving this country on X date, um, it locks you in. But sometimes it's just like, okay, if I want to come back, I can come back. But like, this is the date. If I don't want to leave then and I want to change my ticket, I can do that. But I've made it, I've made a decision and that is no longer a question. And yeah. so making decisions like that um, and figuring out which ones, which decisions you want to make early and which ones you want to make late, later uh, is a skill that you may already have, but you will sharpen when you travel long-term because it's just so many questions. Yes. All right, any other questions for us, friends? We um, we have a hard out, so we so y'all get your questions in. Don't leave here with your questions because we have a time when we have to be done. Because Rashida is working today. This is a work day for Rashida. So this is a go walk around and take pictures day for me. <laughs> It's a work We're both day. in Mexico. Some of you don't know us. Most of you know us. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I have a really bad delay today. Didn't you just have bad Wi-Fi? And then you moved. You were gonna have good Wi-Fi. And now look. I did. Now look. Now. Look. That's why it's not a work day. Okay. So I see Krista in the comments. Hey, Krista, girl. Krista was in from Burnout to Bliss in the last, um, the last cohort. Krista, can you join us? Do you have time? I'm putting you on the spot. Don't ever put me on the spot. Be on live video, but I'm putting somebody else on the spot right now. <laughs> if you're still Chris watching, in Hawaii, but it's it's you. it's late in the morning, so she may have clothes on. <laughs> She's in Hawaii, but it's not early morning, so she no. may be dressed. <laughs> As someone who's joined that a call, Stephanie, fine. in a bathrobe, <laughs> it doesn't matter what hour of the day it is. Just you know, hey, I'm here. Okay, I am going to send Krista the link and she's going to join us in five minutes. I'm going to DM you on IG, Krista. Great. Yay. All right. That's working out. All right. So Rashida and I are both in Mexico right now. Um, we're here because we have gotten the information that we needed on how we can work remotely from a different place, right? Some of us aren't necessarily looking to move permanently, Rashida has moved permanently, I have not, right? So you may be here today and you may be considering some, a temporary situation, right? You wanna get to Mexico temporarily. You wanna take advantage of this 180 day tourist visa and uh, you wanna get some planning underway. Um, we're, we've both been in Mexico for months and months on this current stretch of time. Um, and it's been a wonderful place to you know, live and work and run around and take photos for the ground. If you have questions about that, your questions don't have to be about like a career break or move abroad. You may still be working and you may have some questions about actual remote work life from another place. Okay, so ask your questions. Also, also like just go ahead and click the link that Rashida has given us from burnouttobliss.co, dot co, not dot com, dot co, from burnouttobliss.co. Okay, it's gonna that uh, that is gonna answer some questions, but we're right here, so you might as well ask them now. Yes, and to give you a little bit more about the structure of From Burnout to Bliss, uh, it is a twelve module course that is uh, delivered over fourteen weeks. We have two implementation weeks in the middle, which can either be like nap weeks, like I have done, I am fully caught up. Let me just chill love my life or the, I had a lot going on. I'm a couple weeks behind. This is a week to catch up. And so part of what I hear from women who are planning trips like this is that they get overwhelmed 
or feel like it's, it can be too much, especially if you're doing it on your own. And so with a guided course like that, I don't want anyone to feel like it's too much. So I make sure that we have like space to get things done. So 14 weeks, 12 modules, each Sunday I release a module and we do a group coaching session every other week in the group coaching session. They're gonna be a little bit different this time than they were before. Um, you guys are gonna send me your questions in advance and then we're going to go through the questions so that if there are multiple questions that are alike, we can move those to the top of the list and make sure that they get answered. Um, we talked about the bonuses. There's office hours once a month. Um, and the point of that, you can come in and ask me any individual question you have. A lot of times in the office hours, uh, we talk about how we're feeling, how our planning is going. But if you have specific planning questions like, I want you to look at this route that I'm planning, right? But you don't wanna do it when there are a bunch of people there for uh, the group coaching sessions, you can do that then. I, you can get that individual attention. There may be some other people there, but it will be a smaller number than the group session. Uh, let's see, there's a Facebook group, which the people who are in and out will tell you is like a little, little love fest of women because part of, what I needed when I was planning my and out on the world on, on my own was I needed other people who were doing it or planning it and telling me that I'm not crazy. Like there are parts of my trip where I thought I was having like a mental breakdown. Like, is this depression? What's going on? I don't know. I don't know. What's, I don't feel good and I don't know what's going on. And then afterwards in talking to more people who have taken career breaks, I realized that other people felt like that too. And it was like, it's a perfectly normal, like when you are by yourself for a long time, right? And when you're constantly moving like that and you get tired, it can feel like all I want to do is lay in bed for a week. But my brain doesn't recognize lay in bed for a week as a need. My brain recognizes lay in bed for a week as like something must be wrong. Right. Um, but in these groups, you can get together and talk about feelings like that. And, and like other people will assure you that no, nothing's wrong with you. You're just tired and you need to rest. And it's okay. It's okay that if you're in a new country, you've, you've hit country number 16, right? New country, you love it. But all you want to do is lay in bed and eat Cheetos and watch Netflix. Like that's okay. And we're here to support you and tell you that you're okay. You are muted. Were you spying on me this week? I was not spying on you. I was really in bed <laughs> eating Cheetos. Yes, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. So, okay, we have right, a couple uh, questions. Oh, go ahead. Before I move on, there's a money back guarantee on From Burnout to Bliss. You have 30 days from the day you pay to tell me, not nah, girl is saying it. Like, nope, nope. Mm -mm. And sometimes I won't take it personally. I don't. Um, sometimes it's just not the right program for you or it's not the right time for you, but I gave you some time to kick the tires. You don't have to do anything to get a refund, except let me know you want it. There's no long conversations. There's not, I'm not gonna be trying to convince you to stay in. If you have questions about, if you have questions that I can answer about whether the rest of the program will be right for you or something is gonna change, happy to answer those, but this is not, I don't negotiate with you and your money. Like if you want it back, I'm gonna give it back to you. No hard feelings. Thanks for coming. Let's stay in touch. Um, so yeah, so there's a 30 day money back guarantee um, and my former students love it. And it really changed some of their lives. Some of them, yeah. they even moved within the US but to places they never thought were possible before because they like, they saw the possibilities. Some are on sabbaticals right now. So we're planning. So you had questions, Stephanie. Yes. Okay. Bella's question is uh, the 108 tourist visa. Do you obtain that at the airport or at a local post office? She's in Philadelphia. If you're talking about Mexico at the airport. Mexico. Yeah. At the airport, they just give it to you as you come through. Here's the thing. It doesn't have, it's 180 days. It doesn't have to be. They can give you less. I have never seen them give people, I know they have given people less, especially if you're doing border jumps a lot, but it's never happened to me. So um, if you're, if you've been here for seven years and you leave every 180 days and come back like the next day, they're going to catch on, right? <laughs> but otherwise it's never a problem to get it here at the airport. It costs $25, which is already wrapped into the cost of your ticket. So when you're flying, 
to the US from Mexico, they assume you're a tourist. They charge you a tourist visa uh, uh, fee. And then you just, when you're going through immigration, they give it to you. So they'll ask you questions like most countries do, like, where are you staying? What are you doing? What's going on? Um, but then they just go ahead and stamp it and send you on your way. All right, Ari is not in the US right now, but she's coming to the US in June to apply for residency in Mexico. Okay, she's going to come into Atlanta to apply for residency in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who doesn't know, you can't apply for residency in Mexico while you're in Mexico most of the time under normal circumstances. Uh, she's unless you're working, unless you have a job who's sponsoring you. She says, is she right that if her income is at a certain level, she can go straight to permanent residency? She doesn't have to apply for temporary residency. Accurate. Accurate. Um, Ari, are you in Mexico now, or are you in a different country? All right, let's see. I don't know, let's see, we'll give her some time. Janelle says, can you do temporary visa in Mexico without having a residence? Just house sitting in hostels and stuff, Airbnbs and stuff. Ari, yeah. and then Ari's answer is yes, Mexico. Okay, then yes, Ari, the answer we talked about was accurate, yes. Um, yeah, Janelle, you don't need a permanent residence, a, a, ter a temporary visa. Mm -mm. Um, they don't, they might ask you for when you are doing the permanent, during the last piece of the process, the final piece in Mexico, they might ask you for something like a utility bill to show that you are living somewhere, but my utility bills don't have my name on them. Mm -hmm. My utility bill is going to have my landlord's name on it. And I'm going to show my uh, bill in someone else's name. And that's very common in Mexico is to sh prove your residence by having your hands on a utility bill of someone else's name. So if you were going to stay at an Airbnb, I would tell, I would ask them ahead of time if they could, if you can use uh, the utility bill, their utility bill to prove your residence. Um, and you don't have to be there. There's no definition. It's not like you're telling the government you're going to be there like 90 days or three years, you're just saying like, this is where I am right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So today, this is where I live is what you're showing them when you show them the utility bill. That's all. Yeah. All right. So yes, Ari, that's what we're saying at $8,000 per month. If your income is 8k per month, which is well above the threshold for residency in Mexico, you can apply for permanent, you don't have to start with temporary. Now for during COVID times, there was a there was a time when they said, temporary and then you'll have to upgrade or whatever to permanent but during normal situation during normal times you can start with permanent yes that's what she's saying so morgan has a question about from burnout to bliss okay yes is the burnout to bliss um you said that the first 30 people will get some upgrades some bundles she wants to make sure that the house sitting bundle is or the house sitting upgrade is still a available so are these new these upgrades that you talked about are those still available the house sitting upgrade is still available i think morgan's on the wait list and that's what she's talking about uh, um, because there was a bonus for people who are on the wait list which if you're not on my email list i emailed people about it for weeks so if you were on the wait list uh there may be an additional bonus for you Morgan, everything that was originally available is still available. So if you got an email, whatever you got in an email from me as available is still available to you. Okay. I hope that makes All sense. Right. So yes, House City School will always be, always. Uh, in this launch, will uh, there's no running out of that. Stephanie is ensuring that you can get as much of that. And if you had access to a one-on-one -on -one with me, those are still available and those will be available throughout the rest of this launch. There's some, there was something though that only the first 30 people get. Office that's still hours. a bit, thank you, office and hours. And that is still available. Okay, all right, so get on it. <laughs> yes. Get on it. Don't come, don't come around uh, on May 9th, May 8th, talking about, oh, it's too late to get the office hours. <laughs> all right, Morgan, if you have questions about what is, available to use. I'm trying to look you up now, but I'm trying to do too much, girl. Um, if you have questions about what's 
specifically available to you, yeah. <laughs> um, shoot me an email and we'll talk about it. And I think you said you found me, so you're already on my email list. Yes. If not, um, we'll, I'll track you down like a stalker. All right, any other questions? <laughs> yes, yeah, Cerulean Traveler, I wanna do a round the world trip for a year before I settle down more permanently. I strongly feel Mexico residency is my end game. Should I do temporary residency first before I start the round the world trip? You have 30 days from the time you do the US process to finish the process in Mexico. So if you are not planning on coming to Mexico in the next 30 days, don't start the process. Otherwise you'll have to do it all over again. So um, you could, I wanna tell you that you could start the process by doing like getting your paperwork together, but countries change their requirements so frequently that it might not even be worth it. So, I would say if one thing to know is that you can apply for residency in Mexico in other countries. You don't have to be in the country you live in. You just have to be legally in the country. So if your country before Mexico is Colombia, you would go to the Col Mexican embassy or consulate in Colombia and um, do the exact same thing. The requirements differ from country to country. So if you are applying in Colombia, they might have a different dollar figure for income than they have in the US. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind, but that is a way to do it without going back to the US if you don't want to. So you can apply, you can apply in different countries. That's good you just info. Have to. Yeah. Ari, as yeah, try yeah, as we right. might, that's, it's not going to be black. <laughs> as many people have come to, I saw, I went on a food tour the other day and I saw two black people and I was so excited that I saw two black people because it had been so like long because I saw two black people on the same day. But yes, come through. Let's do this. Yeah, that's good info. You don't have to be in the in your country, your passport issuing country to apply for residency. You just can't be in Mexico. Yeah, nope. so you could start the process in the place you're going. That was good info. Good coaching, Rashida. <laughs> All right. So seriously, we have a time. We have a cutoff, and that cutoff is fast approaching. So ask your questions about working remotely, about doing... moving abroad, about taking a sabbatical. Ask them. I was doing too many things. I was like, well, until Chris is here. Sorry, girl. Hey, Krista. I didn't see you try to get in. My bad. I think she's here. Anyway, okay, so Krista lives in Hawaii and Krista still needs a break from Hawaii. Um, because like, Sometimes work is work is work. It doesn't matter what country you're in, right? So right. let's see. Krista, Krista, we can't hear you or see you. Ah, look at that. How dare you? Hi. <laughs> How dare you? Are you are you actually at work? Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Look at you. Thank you. You're welcome. I like that your was my sunset from a couple days ago. <laughs> oh wait, that is an actual picture you took? Uh-huh. Yep. See how she just, just showing out. <laughs> just you see this? I'm gonna smile. It's a flex. I've got to share. I've got to share. Yeah. That's gorgeous. So That's gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, Thank okay. You. So tell the people you are in Hawaii, but you Correct. still need to get away. Most of us are like, can we get away to Hawaii? But you are in Hawaii and you still want to get away. Yeah. A job <laughs> yeah. is a job. A job is a job. It doesn't matter where you are, what your location is, you're still going to need to break, especially uh, we're not, it's not even pre-COVID, post-COVID, during COVID, just all the stuff that's going on, on like these jobs will stress you the fuck out. Sorry. Yes. It's fine. But, you're good. You know, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You still need a break. It doesn't matter if paradise is in your backyard, like you just need a mental reset. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. 
but I'm, I'm still staring at like the paradise behind you though still you want me to but, show you the real picture, <laughs> the real picture. <laughs> no ma'am go playing with me she's playing with me i'll see this um okay but i want to talk to you real quick about from burnout to bliss so you can tell the people uh -huh. what your experience was like and what you what you got out of the course mind you krista did not know we were doing this today i sprung this on her because i saw her in the comments <laughs> go ahead girl so for me doing the exodus summit i went in because it was uh i've always had an idea of where i need to get away i need to get out the u.s for a little bit but i didn't and i had in my mind of the steps i probably should take but i needed that guidance or that just little push of i'm on the right track or try this try that so that's kind of what the burnout to bliss uh course did for me because i had my ideas i had my thoughts but I kind of one needed that reassurance that I was on the right page. But also for those of you who end up working with Rashida, she's gonna push you a little bit and she's gonna question a whole bunch of things and you ain't gonna like it, but it's okay. Cause you need to hear it. And eventually it will make you feel better. But burnout to bliss for me was letting me know that yes, one, I do need this, especially after going through COVID, but also like you're, there's no correct path. You just have to make sure that you have thought about one, what you're doing and you've mapped out potential backup plans because shit happens, life happens and you just need to be prepared for whether that's emotionally, financially, mentally, all of that. And then the group of women usually that are, that at least that was there for me, it's all one big support system. And so everyone's your own cheerleader and you kind of have a cheer in the background, still cheering you on, but the ladies are really just as supportive, if not more than Rashida. We still love you, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm less cheerleader and more like, but did you get it done? <laughs> right? I am she is very much. Did you get it done or no? Do you really need that? Like, is that really what you need? Like, do you really need to buy that? Ooh. Like, just let that go. Yeah. I and, and so I I want people to know that there are online courses that you have probably already bought where you bought it and then you did not hear from the instructor again or there were group coaching sessions and it felt completely like there was no involvement. That is not what from Burnout to Bliss is. If it you is give sure me not. an opportunity, <laughs> I will harass the hell out of you until you are on your sabbatical. Like that is, that is my, I tell them that's my specialty. You need an accountability yep. buddy? Hello, I'm here. Yep. If I see you and online doing things that are not in the service, that you have decided, because I don't decide what's in service of your, mm -hmm. your break, your sabbatical. If I see you doing things that you have told me are not in your best interest, I'm about to be like, ma'am, ma'am, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Because that's why I'm here. Now, everybody else yes. is like, yay, go you. And I'm also, yay, go you. But I'm, I'll, I'll be there watching. Yes, Correct. Stephanie, I see the hand. So, Crystal, what is different for you now? after going through from burnout to bliss? What's different for you? I think the biggest thing for me was because it has been an idea for a year for years, I never really put a timeline or game plan together. It was always a thought and idea in the back of my mind. But once you have to put stuff to paper, then it kind of forces you to stay on track. So that was one thing for me where like, even though I haven't, our last session was, I think back in like January or something, I still have this to-do list of things that I still need to accomplish to get me to that goal. So for me, my sabbatical date was, wasn't as soon as everyone else's. Like I had, a, I have a year and a half to plan for it. So kind of how things ended with Rashida and I, I have this to-do list because I have so much time of things I need to accomplish. And we were realistic with each other where don't try to do it all in six months, but also don't try to do it all in the 18 months, like have milestones all throughout that process. One, so you're staying on top of it. And two, you're not overwhelmed trying to go on this sabbatical. So that's the last thing you want for the sabbatical to be overwhelming for you. So for me, that's what's changed is, granted work, life gets busy, but I still have these check marks that I can check off of Yep, I've accomplished this. Yep, I've accomplished this. Now I'm moving towards this. So it's just more so keeping yourself accountable and you can see big picture because it's all written down for you. All right, Chris, do you want to tell the people where you're going? 
So my tentative plan is to go to Turkey and to stay there for about three months and then travel around Eastern Europe and North Africa because Turkey is a good landing spot to get to all of those. And my plan is to leave here June of 2022 to do that sabbatical, although I may have a change for that, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to track you down and talk about that change, but you know, we'll okay. talk about yeah, that. That's fine. That's fine. Um, and tell us what language you're learning in your year and a half. I, um, this is why I say it's accountability and putting things to order. About five years ago, I bought Rosetta Stone in French because France is my like dream place to always live, but I had never cracked open the case, even though I paid that three, $400 for it, but Part of my to-do was to go through at least the first three courses or three modules by the end of the year. And so I've started. All right, now, Krista. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. All right. Okay. Yes. Now, Rashida, this is awesome, Krista. We'll, we'll be there with you. Okay, so according to the chat, we'll all be. When you get to Turkey, you need to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep, keep, friends it, keep, bedroom, keep the bedroom we'll, open for us because we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll have one big party. We'll do a little Rashida, barbecue. We'll do it all. Uh, Krista <laughs> talked about how she. Thank you. Thank you kindly. <laughs> <laughs> Rashida, Krista talked about how she's got, uh, she had 18 months before her sabbatical when she started from Burnout to Bliss and some other people were leaving very soon. Mm -hmm. Who is some, from Burnout to Bliss for? How do we know if it's going to be right for us? So if you're leaving in the next three months, I wouldn't recommend that. If you want some help, I can I can help you one-on-one. -on -one. But um, like I said, it's a, it's a 14, it's the course is given to you over 14 weeks. And so if you're leaving during that 14 weeks, it's probably, it, you could probably do it if you're only gonna miss like the one or two last modules, but otherwise it might be too soon. You have other things you need to plan and you might not wanna take it as slowly. Um, but if you plan on leaving anytime this year or next year, I think it's great. One of the things that Krista hit on is that because she has this time, she doesn't have to do everything in a rush. So for a lot of people I work with, saving is a goal for them, right? They want to pay down debt and they want to save money. And if Krista was leaving in six months, Krista might have to do work a little bit faster, a little bit harder then she might have to get a second job now. <laughs> we know, <laughs> we know that ain't happening. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> no. Um, but she might have to figure out a way to get money um, that now that she has an 18 month runway, she has more time for. So if you have a year before you wanna leave, if you have two years before you wanna leave, even if you have six months, we can get a lot done in six months. Um, but if it's three months, it's probably not right. So six months to two years, if that's your departure frame, I think you'd be perfect in the course. If you, like Krista, have always thought about doing it, but you've never made it happen yourself, um, you gonna have a plan on paper and you're going to have dates and you're going to be ready to go and you're going to have countries. Because um, Krista, when we started, had 33 countries on her list of places she Don't wanted to- me. Don't shame yeah. me. <laughs> That's what you get for giving us that background. You know I was going to do something salty. <laughs> and we narrowed that down because 33 was too much, right? So we figured yep. out how, how too much. not from my information, but from what Krista wants, right? How does Krista, what, um, what factors does Krista use? to narrow down her list. And that's what I do with all of my clients. Like, this isn't my trip, this is your trip. So based on, I get to know you, I get to know what you want, which is why I can harass you when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. But um, <laughs> I get to know you, I get to know what you want, what your goals are. And we use that information to inform every every choice you make on your trip. Like you, Krista wants to go to Turkey, Krista wants to go to Europe, she wants to go to Africa. If Krista was like, let me add in Asia real quick, I'd be like, why right like let's talk about what you're going to get out of this that you couldn't get on a separate trip um some other time like is it is it going to add more than it takes away to your trip um and so that's also a benefit that you get from being from it not being like a three-week course right if it was a three-week course I wouldn't know you <laughs> at the end the fact that it is over 14 weeks we have spent time together we get to know each other and that's really a great opportunity 
Um, we got to go soon, but Krista, before we all get out of here, what mm -hmm. would you tell people who were on the fence about Humberoptimus? Um, being on the fence is normal. Um, just naturally, people want to keep their money close to their pocket. But especially if someone's like me, where it's been a plan or it's been a goal, but you haven't really truly worked on it and you don't have actual things in order of like, this is how I'm going to make it happen. This is what I'm going to do. These are the things that you need to accomplish. If you're true to yourself and that's really what you want, the amount of money you would pay and the amount of time that you're going to invest to go through this course will benefit you in the end and it'll all be worth it. Like I had friends who were like, well, do you really need that? You're really good at planning your trips all by yourself. Like, why do you need to do that? Well, yes, I know what my skill set is, but I also need someone who's done it before and who can look at it from a different perspective and give me that insight that I'm not looking at. So my personal opinion is it's basically like you would go to a career coach or a guidance counselor to make sure you're on the right track. This is the same thing. As and you're no dancing. career coach. <laughs> Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. If you're um, on the fence, I, we do have to go. But if you're on the yes. fence or if you're feeling fear, so that fear is not a reason to not do something, right? Fear fear is the reason to get support. Fear is a reason to bring in Correct. support. So if you're feeling fear, if you don't want to sit back next June and watch Krista and with your arms folded, upset that she's bopping around Turkey and North Africa, <laughs> right? If you don't want to be a hater, one of the jealous haters, work on your own plan, work on your own plan and bring in somebody who can work, help you, bring in some support. We don't do things on our own anymore that we could do easier with help. We don't, that's old, that was 2020, 2019. 2021 us brings in help when we need help. We get help, we do it. Because we need it. We need it. We can't be any everything to everybody and do everything. No, we are not Team Superwoman. No, indeed. Yeah. When we want, when we need help, we get help. Okay. Yeah. All right. So from burnout to bliss.co. Okay. Go to from burnout to bliss.co. There's a right, there's a link on there to yes. Uh, there's a link on there to like I have a question. Was it? Am I no, confused? There the was last, last year, but there isn't this year. <sighs> Okay, so but if you have this a question, was, I'm, this was your my email. <laughs> I'm going to put my email address in this box and then I'm okay. going to delete it in like when this week is over. So okay. crazies don't email me. Um, okay. Don't let your crazies email me. If you have questions, you can email me. I will answer them. If you see me on social media, you can DM me. I'm checking my DMs. It's the one time of year I do. Just... Are you right. trying to write my email address? Woo. <laughs> you can do it. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for yes. coming, Krista, girl yeah. from work in Hawaii with that background. You're welcome. Mm, I'm a hater. Uh, <laughs> you girl, look at it. Ain't it pretty? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for joining us. I'm dropping my email address right now. Um, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Any questions, Bye, definitely friends. email Bye. me. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>